Ladies and gentle cult, I welcome you to cr back to Crusaders of the Lost Mark, part four. Let's begin. Knowing my little apple bloom and her friends, they've already stirred up the whole host of trouble. Go on then, bring them back safe and sound. But a silent lot, he thundered off. Granny Smith sent her own bones in the grass, watching him leave. Soon the sound of another pony arriving filled the clearing. Big Macintosh breathed a sigh of relief as he approached the gra his granny. Granny, you shouldn't be sneaking out like that. Lovable Jack and her friends take care of things. Oh, I am, Macintosh. Then what in Crustria are you doing out here? She looked off in the direction Smithy was running. Just felt like helping an old pony get his, get the hitch out of his giddy up. Come on, set yourself down a spell. We'll wait here for the good news. I don't know, Granny. Should I be out there too? Granny Snapple shook her head. If that old war horse can't get those three fillies and our Applejack back safely, we'll need you to trounce the boy, trounce the boys up. My old legs ain't are for hoofing it into town if it all goes pear-shaped now. Big Mac looked at her sideways for a moment before obliging his grandmare with a frown fixed on his muzzle. Scootaloo! What? asked Scootaloo, puffing her mane out of her face with a quick breath. Can I walk closer to you? Continued Apple Bloom. What's the matter, chicken? Asked Scootaloo voice hard. Kinda, a little, said Apple Bloom. Me too, it's dark in here and I think it's getting late, said Sweetie Belle. Should we go home? We can catch a monster any day. Scootaloo sighed. It's always dark in this forest, she said, well, rolling her eyes. She blinked. Truth be told, it, it had gone from exciting to first, then boring, and then to scary, as the already wild wild uh, ever free forest has devolved into something primal and raw she was ready to leave too and besides the armor was kind of heavy okay fine we'll go home since you two babies are missing your bedtimes that's not what i said but aj whoop but aj will whoop me if something fierce if i'm late again and i'm hungry said sweetie bill rarity will be worried if she can't make dresses when she's worried the Creedy Mark Crusaders bust and fought over the acting of turning around. After much shuffling about, they ended staring off in three different directions into the dark, covered forest. Uh, any pony know which way home is? asked Sweetie Belle. I think it's this way, said Sweetie pointing at who. Nah, ah, said Apple Bell. It's this way, cuz we came from there. Did not, it's that way. Did too, did not, did too. Would you too quiet down? I think I heard some pony, shouted Sweetie Belle, uncharacteristically loud. With the outburst, the two weren't silent. As they were, as, and as they strained, they realized that they could indeed hear sounds of ponies in distress, and one of them was hollering obscenities that were often apple related. That sounds like Applejack. Wow, those are some bad words. I gotta remember those, Scootaloo exclaimed. Helping defend the weak. Does this make us soldiers now? Asked Sweetie Belle. I don't know. My sister ain't no weakling, but I gotta go help her. And we'll help too. One for, one for all and all for one. Charge! Twilight, twilight. There ain't no time for no pony taking no nap. Get up! Hollered Applejack, followed by a large string of obscenities that would make a sailor blush. Twilight groaned and kicked her at four hoof weakly. A bruise on her forehead was swelling up, visible under her coat, and almost seemed to bend her horn out of position. Applejack risked a glance before turning her attention back to the creature which had given it to her. She sprang forward, forwards, positioning herself between her friends and the monster. It was a troll, huge and ugly, with poor hygiene. All of these facts could, could and were often used to describe such creatures but only after the most depressing of traits were dealt with, namely thick hide that was impervious to almost anything short of magic, and the meat club paws that could shatter rock and bash the brains out of the most other creatures. Unfortunately, Twilight, Applejack, and Fluttershy had been caught unawares. The beast had leapt at him on, of, out of the undergrowth and delivered a glancing but heavy blow to the purple unicorn, which had all but knocked her silly. The three had scattered, running for their lives, Twilight staggering and falling, but it, each time rising just long enough to escape, although none of them knew how to, they got as far as they had. At the time, it had mattered more from what, what there were to, but now Applejack and her two friends were seemingly trapped in the blind, blind gorge thick with heavy overhead vegetation, all but blocking an escape route to the sky.
The troll grinned as if this is and as if to say that it was a joy to it's going to enjoy a hearty meal. It startled to advance on the trio, but suddenly darted back with a yelp, frowning. It did this a couple more times and then scowled, standing there, glaring at the trio in frustration, pacing back and forth. Come on, Twilight, you gotta get up. Flush out how she's doing. I, I, stared at the young Leola Pegasus, running her hoof gently over the struggling form of her friend. She's hurt, Applejack. I think she's got a concussion. Can she do magic? yelled Applejack, eyes fixed on the monster, only a few feet away. It was stomping backwards, and then forwards, growling. What is it waiting for? she wondered. We're right here. I I can barely stand up, groaned Twilight, shaking her head and getting to her forehooves. Her ears were ringing, and, st and she was still seeing spots. She staggered to her hooves, but fell heavily. She raised her head and concentrated. Her horn, horn burst into light, and sparks flew from it, but they soon fizzled out. She lolled back. I'm sorry, forgive me. Fluttershy stood over Twilight in, in a rather terrified attempt to sh shield her helpless friend. I can't go get help because the trees are so dense. I don't think it, I can carry both of you, much less Twilight. Don't sweat it, Sugar Q. It just means we gotta do this the old fashioned way. She then she turned back quickly to the monster and, and reared up, kicking her front hooves. Come on, then. Come at me. What are you waiting for? Applejack yelled and pawed the ground, darted back and forth, anything to keep the creature at bay. The troll stood back away from the barely illuminated clearing, occasionally lunging as if to walk forward, but stopping and glaring at them. Somehow figured Applejack her tactics were working, but she had no idea why. Three small ponies, one of them knocked sillier, sillier than a cuckoo in spring. What could, what could they do against such a beast? Her heart sank, thinking about her family. Could Granny take it when she didn't come home? Could Big Mac? Her heart sank even lower when she heard the unmistakable sounds of three overly adventurous filly foals charging towards her through the forest. The monster heard it too and turned. Applejack used the chance to leap at the troll, spinning in the air and delivering a kick to the monster's gut that would have bucked the, the, an entire apple tree, roots and all, out of the out of the ground. The monster grunted, stumbling into a kneeling position. The trail used the distraction to scamper and cl clank past the slow-witted troll before it had a chance to register their presence fully. It rose and rubbed its side, dazed and slightly annoyed. The trio skidded to a stop in front of the Applejack. Apple Bloom, no, get out of here. Take your little friends and run. I can't do that, sis. I'm a soldier now. You ain't no soldier. You're a foal. A crazy foal with delusions of grandeur. Get on home now. Ain't happening, sis, said Apple Bloom. She and her two friends turned to face the troll, standing as tall as they could. We took an oath. You'll get your, get your silly self killed. This ain't playtime. No, sis, it ain't. Apple Bloom lowered her armored head and pawed the ground, almost unrecognizable in AJ's eyes as her stance shifted into cool readiness. Okay, Phillies, just like Sergeant Smitty t sir taught us. The little soldier started galloping, full tilt, sunlight flashing off the metal, glinting in the glare. She threw herself at the troll and slammed into it, shoulder first. It howled. Scootaloo was next. She leapt into the air, wings buzzing with effort, as she turned the backflip and slammed hooves that glinted silver into what stood for its face. It staggered back, confused in pain, angered, unsure. Sweetie Belle wasted no time. She lowered, she too lowered her head, but this was for no glancing blow. Her horn was tipped with the same silver filigree that adored the hooves of the trio, and it seemed no, almost on fire as she changed. The monster was worried now. It had to, had to run, but it wasn't fast enough. There was a sizzling flash and a crack as... Miraculously, Sweetie Belle's horn sunk a few inches to the leathery flesh. Smoke poured from the wound as in its swung club sized paws to both bat away its assailant as well to cover the injury. Sweetie Belle was too fast and too small, and the blow resounded off her flank guards and threw her a few feet where she rolled her hooves and shook her head on her. Apple Bloom, what are you doing? screamed Applejack, horrified and confused herself. Her little sister was in battle and winning. I'm doing what I was taught. Sergeant Smithy says to look death in the eye and spit in the fa in its face. That's for soldiers, you dumb fool. I keep telling you, she shouted up breathlessly. I'm a soldier. She left again and turned. 
planting her rear hooves into the knee of the troll. Again, the silver flash flashed in what weak sunlight there was filtering through the canopying above. Where her hooves struck, the skin appeared cracked, burnt almost. Applejack couldn't make sense how the little fillies were doing it. They couldn't have, have the strength nor the weight for the for that beast to even realize what they were doing anything. All they had was a few simple moves and that shiny armor. Wait, shiny? It's the sunlight, Applejack yelled to the trio. Keep it in the sunlight. It's a troll. They hate sunlight. Don't you remember those bedtime stories I keep telling you? I sure do, sis. You heard her, girls. Let's give him sunburn. I'm on it, Scootaloo, said Scootaloo. She leaped between the two trees and rebounded off the, tr off the trunks, her wings whirring away to gain what little altitude the Pegasus pole could manage. She, she'd been practicing the move that propelled her over Smithy the day they set his mane on fire. Using what she remembered from practice, she bought a little that, what little weight she had to bear. Twisting the air, she aimed her sharp-edged hooves at the branches and snapped them off with the force of their aerial kick. The weak spots of sunlight became searchlights of flame, and daytime came to every free forest. The golden shaft of heat and light struck the troll full on, and it roared, it howled, it screamed. The tree regrouped, breathing heavily, sweating, and exhausted. It was still coming, settling quickly around the spot of light. It huffed and puffed, blackened flesh, seared and leaking from what passed for blood from the wounds of the three little armored whirling dervishes had inflicted. It was in pain. It was hurt, and it was mad. It roared again, a bellowing howl that shook the trees down to the roots, and wildly swung out with the back of, of its hand, right into the charging trio, knocking them all the way back to Applejack. Apple Bloom wobbled back to her feet, looking slightly groggy. She looked in the monster in the eye and spat on the ground, giving a shaky little battle cry of her own. I ain't afraid of you, she cried, her two friends snorting with the effort of rising up, Applejack and Fluttershy helping them to their hooves. The trio regrouped and feebly pawed the ground in front of them, trying to look fierce. Suddenly, a commotion at the other end of the glade drew the other's attention as something huge and heavy entered into the clearing. Applejack swung her head around, ears splaying back in fear and anger. Now what? She said to herself. A figure wreathed in darkness stepped forth. It was hard to recognize until it entered the clearing, and a dark block gave away to almost black armor and a familiar figure wielding a massive maul in its jaws. At the sight of newcomer, her spirits lifted. Smithy, is that you? The apple the blacksmith stretched and set his hammer down, as much to show the troll what it, it was going to be dealing with in a few moments, as from as from any need. The run had provided enough warm-up. Da it is I, Miss Applejack, little Apple Bloom. I I hear you. Is the only fool who is not scared is boy who is scared, but who does what must be done is an important lesson. You will be remembering. Da, sir, said Apple Bloom, leaping for joy. Da, echoed Scootaloo and Sweetie Belle. Smithy moved to join them, appraising the beast. I am seeing this is a standard troll, big, smelly, snoopid. What are these weaknesses, Scooty Pony? AJ says sunlight. Da, sunlight, and silver, silver is burning troll. You are being lucky, little ponies, that Smithy is big, softy, and want to give pretty armor to pretty fillies. Sunlight is turning high to stone, shiny armor to be reflecting light. You know his sick plan? Da, spread out. Keep it in light. Keep it off balance. Never let an enemy, enemy regroup. Never let an enemy recover, says Scootaloo. The other two nodded. This is time for the end game now. Smithy is here. Crusaders, events. The four warriors functioned as a unit. The playtime Smithy had spent with them had been well received. The three moved on the outside of a circle, keeping the creature off balance as they zigzagged under its legs, pelting it with the reflected rays of light from different directions. Smithy st stood watching for a moment until the creature turned its back on him and then picked up the huge warm mole he had never thought to use again in, in his teeth. Most ponies would never be able to drag across the ground, let alone lift it, but he hefted its weight almost like a toy around 
the handle. He bellowed his own war cry and started a slow, painful, thundering gallop towards the beast. He leaped into the air as it turned to face him, shock and surprise registering on his brutish features as almost a tongue and an angry metal-clad stallion. And Mold slammed into it. Continue this in part five.